A multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle is a ballistic missile payload containing several warheads, each capable of being aimed to hit one of a group of targets. By contrast a unitary warhead is a single warhead on a single missile. An intermediate case is the multiple re-entry vehicle missile which carries several warheads which are dispersed but not individually aimed. Only the United States, Russia, France and China are known to have developed MIRV missiles. Purpose the military purpose of AMIRV is fourfold, enhance first strike proficiency for strategic forces, providing greater target damage for a given thermonuclear weapon payload. Several small warheads cause much more target damage area than a single warhead alone. This in turn reduces the number of missiles and launch facilities required for a given destruction level much the same as the purpose of a cluster. Munition with single warhead missiles, one missile must be launched for each target. By contrast with the MIRV warhead, the post-boost stage can dispense the warheads against multiple targets across a broad area, reduces the effectiveness of an anti-ballistic missile system that relies on intercepting individual warheads, while a MIRV attacking missile can have multiple warheads. Interceptors may have have only one warhead per missile. Thus, in both a military and an economic sense MIRVs render ABM systems less effective, as the costs of maintaining a workable defense against MIRVs would greatly increase, requiring multiple defensive missiles for each offensive one. Decoy re-entry vehicles can be used alongside actual warheads to minimize the chances of the actual warheads being intercepted before they reach the targets. A system that destroys the missile earlier in its trajectory is not affected by this but is more difficult and thus more expensive to implement. MIRV land-based ICBMs were considered destabilizing because they tended to put a premium on striking first. The world's first MIRV, U.S. Minuteman III missile of 1970, threatened to rapidly increase the U.S.'s deployable nuclear arsenal and thus the possibility that it would have enough bombs to destroy virtually all of the Soviet Union's nuclear weapons and negate any significant retaliation. Later on the U.S. feared the Soviet MIRVs because Soviet missiles had a greater throw weight and could thus put more warheads on each missile than the U.S. could. For example, the U.S. MIRVs might have increased the warhead per missile count by a factor of 6 while the Soviets increased theirs by a factor of 10. Furthermore, the U.S. had a much smaller proportion of its nuclear arsenal in ICBMs than the Soviets. Bombers could not be outfitted with MIRVs so the capacity would not be multiplied. Thus the U.S. did not seem to have as much potential for MIRVs. IRV usage as the Soviets. However, the U.S. had a larger number of submarine-launched ballistic missiles, which could be outfitted with MIRVs, and helped offset the ICBM disadvantage. It is because of this that this type of weapon was banned under the START II agreement. However, START II was never ratified by the Russian Duma due to disagreements about the ABM Treaty. Mode of operation. In the MIRV, the main rocket motor pushes a bus into a free flight suborbital ballistic flight path. After the boost phase, the bus maneuvers using small onboard rocket motors and a computerized inertial guidance system. It takes up a ballistic trajectory that will deliver a re entry vehicle containing a warhead to a target, and then releases a warhead on that trajectory. It then maneuvers to a different trajectory, releasing another warhead, and repeats the process for all warheads. The precise technical details are closely guarded military secrets, to hinder any development of enemy countermeasures. The buzz on board propellant limits the distances between targets of individual warheads to perhaps a few hundred kilometers. Some warheads may use 
small hypersonic airfoils during the descent to gain additional cross-range distance. Additionally, some buses can release decoys to confuse interception devices and radars, such as aluminized balloons or electronic noise makers. Accuracy is crucial, because doubling the accuracy decreases the needed warhead energy by a factor of 4 for radiation damage and by a factor of 8 for blast damage. Navigation system accuracy and the available geophysical information limits the warhead target accuracy. Some writers believe that government-supported geophysical mapping initiatives and ocean satellite altitude systems such as CSAT may have a covert purpose to map mass concentrations and determine local gravity anomalies in order to improve accuracies of ballistic missiles. Accuracy is expressed as circular error probable. This is simply the radius of the circle that the warhead has a 50% chance of falling into when aimed at the center. SEP is about 90 to 100 meters for the Trident II and Peacekeeper missiles. MRV, a multiple re-entry vehicle payload for a ballistic missile, deploys multiple warheads in a pattern against a single target. The advantage of an MRV over a a single warhead is that the damage produced in the center of the pattern is far greater than the damage possible from any single warhead in the MRV cluster. This makes for an efficient area attack weapon. The number of warheads makes interception by anti-ballistic missiles unlikely. Improved warhead designs allow smaller warheads for a given yield, while better electronics and guidance systems allowed greater accuracy. As a result, MIRV technology has proven more attractive than MRV for advanced nations. Because of the larger amount of nuclear material consumed by MRVs and MIRVs, Single warhead missiles are more attractive for nations with less advanced technology. The United States deployed an MRV payload on the Polaris A3. The Soviet Union deployed MRVs on the R-36 Mod 4 ICBM. Refer to atmospheric re-entry for more details.